Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Juana and I am the Crafty Puerto Rican. So you know that I've been working a lot with rhinestones, hot fixed rhinestone to be more specific. And today I'm gonna show you how to create a template. And this is just a beginner step-by-step -step on how to do it. Very simple, very basic, so that you, know, you can get started if you want to work with rhinestones. So guys, I hope this will help you. If you have any questions at the end of the little tutorial, you can plot those questions down on my description box, okay? So guys, let's get started. Okay guys, so I'm in Silhouette Studio and the first thing that I'm going to be doing is um, choose a font. I usually um, choose fonts that are thick because they are easy to work with. Um, and also I want to remind you that in order for me to do this um, rhinestone um, conversion, um, I need to have the business edition in Silhouette, all right? You have to upgrade from the regular edition to the business edition. All right, so I'm going to click the font right here. I'm going to choose the one that I want on the right side. Just try to follow the cursor, okay? And I'm going to choose Impact. Um, this is one of the ones that I usually use. Um, it doesn't have to be Impact. You can use also Arial Black. Um, anything that it has a thick um, style, like this one up here. You can also use your thin um, style fonts for like cursive style um, lettering. But um, to begin with, just start with the thick fonts. I'm gonna place this in the size that I want it. Very important, once you go to the rhinestone section, you cannot change the size. So this is the time for you to decide what size you want to have your design. Um, this is gonna be for a t-shirt, maybe for a pillowcase, I'm not sure yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose um, 11, like a 10 inch, okay? Ten inch in width, that's what I meant. Let me close this in here. The sizing that I usually do is 11, but I'm going to show you why is it that I chose the 10. Um, I think the height is cool. Let me do up to a 7 inch height, just to round it up, 7 inch. Okay. And I'm assuming that you know how to work um, this kind of software, either Silhouette or Cricut. It's the same way when you're designing Cricut, this part right here, no difference. Um, then I'm going to close this. I'm going to make sure this one is on group because I'm going to show you something. Once this one is group, I'm going to ungroup it. You see how the size changes? Now it went down to nine. So I ungroup it uh, to make sure that that is the size that I have because the first one was not a real size because it was group. I ungrouped it and now it went down to 9.7. So now I have to keep changing the size. This one went down to 4.7 inches. So now I'm going to do it again. Make sure that it's the one to get the size that I want. 10.5 for now, I'll close to 10.5. And then I'm going to take it to the height that I want it. So it's very important for you guys to do that because in the beginning when I was learning to do this, um, every time that I did a design, at the end it was smaller than what I chose and I just didn't realize that when you group the word and the word is not ungrouped, it's not a real size. Now I have a real size right here. All right? Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group it. Okay? If you choose a font that is thinner, you can also enlarge it by um, doing a um, offset. Okay, so you go over like this, you choose it, and then you're gonna go to the offset kit up here, and you're gonna choose the offset, okay? This is too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller. This step is optional, you don't have to do this, okay? 0 0.065. All right, so this is the offset. Once I'm done with the offset, I'm going to click it and I'm going to separate it. If you notice, the offset is thicker. You see how thick it is? 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep this aside. This is an optional step. You don't really have to do it because the font was good to begin with. This is just in case you need to make your font thicker. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit thicker to work with, which I like. Um, you can also use uh, the offset to do an um, outline, but that's another another video. I'm not going to get into that now. Once I have it and I'm happy with it and I click it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to group it. Okay. And it's 10.6, which is what I wanted. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, just like, and actually, no, let's go back. I'm not going to group it because since I'm working with rhinestones, what I'm going to do, I'm going to separate it a little bit because sometimes when you're working with rhinestones, it becomes thicker in here and too close to this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate the letters a little bit. They are too close for comfort. All right. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to separate the E a little bit more. All right. So I have space in here. I have space in here. Okay. So let me go like this. I'm going to go up here to spacing. I'm going to space it. Make sure that it's spaced um, horizontally. Okay. So now it's square out. Okay. I have space here. I have space here. And I'm going to do the E a little bit further. Nothing in the corners that is too close, believe me. When you start going to the rhinestone um, part of it, you're going to notice how close they become. So I don't want that to happen. Let's separate the eat a little bit more. So let me see how, how the width of this design. So now I'm on, at 11.2, which is perfect for me. And uh, yeah, I'm going to make it a little bit to seven inches tall. This is good enough for me. All right, so I'm gonna group it. I'm gonna center it. All right, so this looks good. All right, this part right here, we can delete it at the end. This is like the base template and I don't want to Delete it yet because it's already done. In case I made a mistake, I can go back always to this one. Now we're here. Now we're ready to convert it into rhinestone. All right. I click this right here and this drop down came in there. Oh, I can go to the panel on the left side. I'm not sure rhinestones and that's it. So this is the rhinestone panel right here. Um, let me... Take you back a little bit so you can, there we go, a better view. So now um, I'm going to go and choose which which style I'm going to choose. This one is the one that we have right now, which is nothing. This is edge. And what this edge is going to do, you're going to click it. It's not going to feel or anything. It's beautiful, but that's not what I want. Um, then you have um, lineal, which is all over. And to me, that is perfection right now i don't think i had to do any changes into that one i might choose that one um and then this one is is radial and the radial what it's do is um it goes around for um designs that have a lot of curves and stuff like that so you notice how the empty places are i don't want that because this is pretty squared i don't need that so i'm gonna keep the lineal and after I do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to choose the size of the stone, which is 10 SS. That's what I'm going to be using. And here we're going to work with the spaces. All right. I'm going to make this bigger so that you can have a better view. Okay. Um, right now, these are the spaces. All right. Um, I'm amazed that I don't have to do any changes. And this is the easiest thing. Most of the time when you work with rhinestones, and the size, you have to um, move um, circles around, do rearrangements, because it does not always come up, you know, filled completely. Um, in most time, that doesn't happen because I use this kind of font. Um, it was easy, all right? So next, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to choose right here, spacing. It comes with a default of 
um, 0 0.039. I usually take it down to 0 0.020 or 0 0.019, just to make it a little bit um, closer. Um, but I do like this spacing, actually. I might keep it that way. I don't know. Let me just go back to change down here. You can go ahead and change it to 19 and see how it looks like. And you see how they rearrange it? If you look closely, you make it a little bit closer. Um, and I think I like it. Okay. Very important. You're going to be checking everything. Make sure that you don't see any overlapping anywhere. You don't want any circles to overlap. Because if the circle overlaps, then it's not going to cut correctly. So that's why I'm going around with a large view and checking every little space. And looks perfect. This is just perfect. Okay. So now that I did that, um, I'm going to continue with the next step, which is saving it. Let's say that not all the stones are uh, came out so perfect and you need to make some changes, which believe me, people, it happened most of the time. Um, you're going to go here to release stones, all right? What this is going to do is that it's going to release the stones so that you can move things around, so that you can add stones to the design and so forth, all right? Another feature that it has is down here. Um, let me see if you can see. Yeah, you can see the cursor what I have down here, okay? So this gives me the number of how many stones are going to be used on this design. But now I'm going to show you how it's going to look if you decide that you need to make some movement of some sort because you didn't like the way it looks and you want to add some stones. So you're going to go ahead here and you're going to click release, release stones. We're going to be waiting. You're going to see the change is going to happen. It takes some time to switch. Okay, you see what happened here? How it changed? Each circle has an individual box surrounded it, okay? That means that now these circles, I can move them around and rearrange them. Now, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because I want you to see what I'm going to be doing, all right? I'm just moving the thing up. If you see here, this is a circle. Let's say that I don't want that circle. All I have to do is that I'm going to move it away. Oops. This computer is completely moving slowly. Okay. I clicked it to take the boxes out. So I'm going to, let's say that I don't want this circle. I'm going to click this right here and I'm going to move it out. I don't want it. And you delete. All right. For example, let me take it back because I do want it there. Let's say that I want to that I have a hole that I want to fill because it came out um, too loose and I need to um, you know fill in some holes. What I'm going to do, I'm going to right click. I'm going to click duplicate. You can also do copy, but I prefer using duplicate. You can click duplicate and it make a second one. You see? And you can place this one whatever you want. It. You want to put it here. You want to put it whatever. All right? So that is what this is. Okay? So remember, here is to release the stones for you to be able to do this. And then right click for duplicate or click the, the extra that you don't want and delete. Those are the three basic things. Later on, you're going to learn other stuff that are very cool to learn because you can uh, add a whole road of circles. There's a lot of other stuff that you're going to be learning later on. But this is the basic, 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 okay? So I'm going to go ahead and make this smaller because what I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to go to the next step. Okay, let me move this out of the way. Once you do uh, release tones, all the letters are separated. So now you're going to swipe over it. You're going to move the whole thing. It's taking forever. I don't know why the computer is so slow. There you go. Okay. Okay. So now I have everything. I'm done. I'm ready now to save the whole thing. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete this because I don't need it anymore. All right. I'm going to delete it. Okay. So I'm going to swipe this over one more time. <laughs> and then I'm going to go to objects up here. And I'm going to go group. You're going to group the whole thing. Group it. All right. Okay, so now you're gonna go ahead. Um, once you do that, you're gonna click object one more time. It's already grouped, and you're gonna click make compound path. You're gonna make compound path, and it's done. Um, I'm gonna place a color into it so that it's easier for me to work with it in um, design space because when in Cricut, because we're gonna transfer it to Cricut. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click a color just to make it more colorful. Um, it doesn't mean that that's the color I'm gonna be using, but if I don't do that, when I transfer it to Cricut, it's gonna be very clear, difficult to um, to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it um, to this color. All right. So now that this is group and this is nice, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Do not write down the width and the height. You need to know that to use it when you go to Cricut Design Space. So this is 11.354 in width. Let me make it bigger so you guys can see it better, okay? It's 11.354 in width, all right? By 6.835 in height. Very important. I always write it down because I'm going to place that information in the next step. So now we're going to go to file. We're going to go to file. Save as. To hard drive. And this is where you're going to write the dimensions. Okay. So I'm going to call this um, rhinestone. Love. Nice and love. And then I'm going to write the dimension. I'm going to put W11.354. By 6. Oops. 6.835. Okay. And I'm going to. I forgot to put the. The H in height. All right. So I have this information in here, very necessary uh, um, to use when I go to um, Cricut. You're going to go down here on this drop down. You're going to drop down this box right here. And you're going to choose SVG. Boop. And then you're going to say OK. So that is saved into my downloads already. That is what I'm going to be using when I go to Cricut Design Space. OK. One thing that I do... Also, is that I save it to my silhouette, to into my library. Why? In case I come back and I want to work on it, like in the future, I plan to come back and make an outline for this, a nice outline so that I can put an extra color to it. I can use it again and work on the outline, okay? I'm going to show you what that I did from an SVG file. And it came out amazing. I took an SVG file. And I made it. Um, right here. This one I did from an SVG file and I converted it into rhinestones and I love it. Um, I have a video um, of about three months ago that I explained how to choose an SVG file and convert it into rhinestones. It is the same step, people. No difference. Just pretend that this is your phone that you design, And then the rest of the steps is the same. So now I'm going to take you to Cricut Design Space. And what you're going to be doing, if um, you know about Cricut, um, how to download your file, it is the same thing, no difference in downloading. You're going to go ahead and you're going to go to your canvas, go to your canvas. Um, you're going to go all the way down to upload, go to upload up here. Okay, you're going to go upload image. You're going to go to browse. And I'm going to go to Downloads. And I'm going to go all the way down because mine is all the way. Oh, actually, it's on the top this time. So this is the one that I just um, downloaded. I'm going to click that. 
I'm going to open. There you go. And the color is real light. You see how it comes, you can barely, even though I put, I put a, a red color, I can see it, but it's light. Um, I'm going to upload. It's going to be in here, believe it or not. <laughs> But um, it's okay because it has the name of the file right here. You can see the name. This one I colored, and this one I colored for some reason. It didn't take it this time. I'm going to go ahead and click it. Oops. I'm going to add to canvas down here. And you know these steps already. I don't have to tell you these steps. I'm going to click add to canvas. All right. And this is the design. Now, very important, everyone. Sometimes this design do not come in the size that you intended to. It might come it can it might come bigger, but for the most part it comes smaller. In this case, it came smaller. It came 10.7 inches in width by 4.87. That's not the, the dimensions that we wrote and we that we designed. I designed it at 11.354 by 6.835 right so what you're going to do first is you're going to lock you need to change its size because if you leave it like that it's not going to cut, cut correctly circles are going to get, get messed up because that's not the way you designed it right so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to click on the lock up here follow the cursor people i'm going to click in here because i want to lock it um i'm going to plot in here or right in here the dimensions that I want, which are 11.354. And all I have to do is place enter because when I do that, the height is going to correct directly. Uh, make sure that is, the lock is locked. Place the number in here and enter. And it adjusts it by itself. Now I have 11.354 by 5125, which is not even the correct number either. So it did not work this time. So now this one is locked right here, 11.354. I'm going to go ahead and erase this and put the correct number. So this time it does, it didn't work. Most of the time it works. 6.835. Okay, so now I had the correct dimensions. Let me unlock it. This one had already the dimensions that I placed, and because I didn't did, didn't unlock it, it did it changed this one too. So let's go back. This one is eleven point three five four. Now, so now I have the right thing. <laughs> In, anywho. The most important thing for you to know is, let me make it a little bit smaller. The most important thing that you need to know is that in order for you to um, have the correct number, um, this is unlock. And you're going to lock it, place the number in here, and this should give you the next correct number. In this case, it didn't do it. I don't know why. Um, if that happens to you, you have to unlock it and then do it individually. Now, the next step that you're going to do, if you are not going to work with this right now, um, I'm going to save mine because I'm not going to um, work with it right now. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to write um, rhinestone love. And I'm going to save it. Okay. And let's say that you are going to work with it right now. Um, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to go to make it. And of course, I am not going to um, mirror it because we're not going to mirror this time. You know that most of the time with Cricut and you use vinyl. HDB, you have to mirror it. This one you don't mirror because we're going to lift it up with the, um, the rhinestone um, transfer tape. You're going to leave it just like that and you're going to go continue. Okay? I don't have my machine on, so it's not going to connect to anything. So I'm going to cancel this. But that is the next 
step and you should want to cancel. Yes. So that's the next step you're going to do. I have other video tutorials that include how to work with rhinestones and it does explain how to cut the template on the Cricut machine and, and all the things that you need to do. So, so you are invited to go back and watch those videos. Um, so I hope that you learn a lot from this uh, example. Um, if you have any questions, um, let me know. And I can answer those questions down into the description um, box. If you're new to my channel and you have never um, seen this done before, um, and you want to learn about the rhinestones and you want to learn about other stuff that I do, go ahead and consider to subscribe to my channel, The Crafty Puerto Rican. Also, guys, don't forget to subscribe to my Facebook group, The Crafty Puerto Rican Hub. It's a private group that you can join. All you have to do is answer the joining questions as you are in. And guys, you're going to be learning a lot. There are a lot of amazing crafters um, and they work in all different kinds of crafting. And yeah, it's a place to learn. It's a place to share. It's a place to chat. So I really encourage you to join my Facebook group. All right, guys, I will see you pretty soon. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hasta luego.